Okay, folks, uh, it's 7.06. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I'm Stephen Linsky, and still, for the time being, at least serving as clerk of our committee. Um, so maybe just quickly go around, um, say hello, and then also kind of remind folks uh, what clock you're in, if you can remember that, uh, so we get to situate you. So why don't we do this? I'll just go in the order that I have. Frank? I'm Frank Johnson, and I'm in C8, and I'm the operations guy, I guess. Is that right, Steve? Yes. Operations and weed inspector. We should point out in case we run into problems in the future. This is C8 forever, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. We won't uh, say anything further. Karen? No, we won't. Yeah. I'm Karen Samowski, and I believe I'm in C2. Okay. And Karen is uh, and head of the head of I the work pollinator. on the pollinator garden. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Mark? Yes, Mark Leonis, C5. And this year, um, certainly helping with the compost, which is already done, but also uh, working with the donation garden. Great. Okay. Nicole? I. Oh, oh, I'm good. I am unmuted. Hi, I'm Nicole Calero. She, hers pronouns. Uh, I'm in B7, and I'm serving as the treasurer this season. Okay, great. Uh, Ari? Hello, I'm Ari Kagan. I'm sharing B3 with Deb Friedman. Um, and so far, I've helped out with some weeding, some people removal and uh yeah looking forward to some other jobs okay great thank you uh, i don't know i think deb indicated that she might not be able to make it tonight uh, but if you want to remind me or someone that she wanted to raise uh, she had a uh, issue to raise so we'll get to that if you just okay just say that and i'll, I'll try to remember that uh eric Hi, I'm Eric Sioka. I'm in D6, and I'm the uh, the Facebook voice for the for the garden. He's the face. He's our Facebook face. And Eric, I wanted to tell you that I finally figured out how to pronounce your name. So in case I have to do it in the future, it should be. That's okay. I'll just. Change, it's so I'll simple. It next week. Sioka. You, you got it. You got it. All right. Well, all right. Uh, Catherine. I'm Catherine Holmberg, and I believe that I'm in A7. Okay, welcome. Um, may we? May read. There's a little static coming, and, and I think it's either going to be from you, Margie, or you, Mark. So maybe mute yourselves. That's better. Hi, Mayrin. Hi. Um, I'm in A8. I got the pot recently, so I've been chipping away at it, um, but hoping to help out with the donation garden. Yes, great. Thank you so much. Um, Margie, now you can unmute. <laughs> I am, wait, it says I'm muted. No, you're fine. Hear we hear you. We hear you. Okay. Um, I'm in D5, and I'm the outreach person. Um, and I just want to say I'm really happy to see so many people here. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, thank you for adding it. It is great. Okay, now you can mute because you're full of static. <laughs> So Margie is kind of like the in, the internal outreach, and Eric is kind of like the external outreach. I should hopefully cover all the bases there. Um, Melissa, hi, I'm Melissa Bonacorso. I'm in D7, new gardener. Yes, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, and Susanna. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Sorry for my limited tech tonight. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm Susanna Apgar. I'm in B8, um, and I'm sharing my plot with Nina Levison. 
Um, and I, I don't know that I have an assignment as far as like a, a helping kind of a role this year. So if there's something without a person attached, I'm happy to, uh, happy to help out. So. Well, that's good to hear. I, you know, I will just add, we'll report on this later, but when Mark uh, takes it, but in terms of the donation garden, until we really get it in shape, there's a need. Um, so you can consider that certainly, Susanna. Great. I'd be happy to. I'm sure Nina would too. Okay. Jamie. Um, my, my name's Christine. My wife's the computer owner. Her name's Jamie. Oh. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. The name, the name meant nothing to me, and I'm saying, yeah. what? What do I know? Yeah. Um, we're in, uh, gosh, uh, D, D2. <laughs> um, and, yeah, we're new gardeners, so we don't have an assignment yet. So. Okay. Uh, and finally, other one that that's it, I think. Has everyone had a chance to say hello? Did I miss anyone? Uh, Mark, we might might make a note now because I think we are we've got everyone assigned at this point in time that we can get a new plot map out. Um, I I made um, I found a table. There's a I there's a map, and I also filled in this old table I found that has a name the plot number and the email address. So I will send that plus a new plot map to everybody. Well, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, now you got to mute again. <laughs> what, what's going on? I'm static. I don't know. I want you have like a dehumidifier or something running in there. Cause that's what it sounds like. Sounds like something, whatever. Okay. So just a couple other points. Um, our agenda, which was attached to um, the notices that we sent out, um, is basically what we call a standing agenda. Doesn't mean it's the same all the time, but we just kind of add items in at the appropriate uh, uh, point. Um, and so it always starts off with a public comment. Uh, however, I do not see that there's any member of the public here who isn't a member of the garden. So uh, seeing none, I will note for the record that the public comment period has come and has gone. Now we can move to the first uh, um, um, business item, acceptance of the minutes uh, from our last meeting. Uh, those two were attached um, um, to our um, notice. Uh, I should also say that um, Besides being attached to the notices we have, if you go on the city city's website, um, generally speaking, you should find in the in the meetings both the agenda posted and um, the you should be able to access the recording. Uh, I do not know because when I did the minutes, I basically, you know, I take notes as we go along, but I usually try to listen to the recording so I can go back to it. I do not know what happened last time, but our recording seems to be missing in action for our last meeting. I don't know why, um, and uh, I will check to make sure that this one makes it. Um, we are being recorded, incidentally, because um, it's a public meeting. So long and short of it is, not having the recording to listen to, I kind of threw together the minutes as best as possible. It is quite possible that things may have been either left out or misrepresented, whatever. So uh, um, there is, uh, I will accept the motion for acceptance, and that will include uh, any other motion to maybe amend the minutes. So is there a motion to go into for the, uh, for the purposes of accepting the minutes? I see Margie has moved. Okay. And I just think Catherine just second whether she meant to or not. <laughs> Good job. Now, any changes necessary for these minutes? Uh, I think Karen it. is working on unmuting. Yeah. <laughs> the there spelling go. of my name, please. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. How badly did I? All right. <laughs> Uh, phonetically, it's similar. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. All right. That's just a, I think, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That shall be fixed going forward, anyhow. I think it was probably right last time, too, but in any event. Okay. So um, there is a motion uh, to approve the minutes with the uh, amended to, to fix Karen's name. Uh, all in favor of accepting? Aye. Is there anyone in opposition? Yeah, the record will show that the minutes were adopted unanimously. So now we go on to the treasurer's report. I, I do want to say that what, we can, what we're doing now, which is great, is that um, Nicole delivers it, um, but it's also, uh, I include the link um, to what she's reporting in the minutes. So if you actually want to go in and really take a look at it instead of relying on my brief notes, you can go right into the link. So go ahead, Nicole. All right. Uh, do I have, can you allow me to share the screen? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I am sharing my spreadsheet. You know, I have a lot of love for spreadsheets, so I'm sharing the love. So um, as you can see, we have the first tab, which is the running balance. Here are the names and dates of deposits for everyone. We have a total of $870 received this year. This is all based on receipts that I've received from Barbara. Um, so if I know that we filled all the plots, and unfortunately off the top of my head, I don't remember how many plots we have in the garden. Can anyone provide me that number? Look well, in. we're we're forty eight minus two. Um, forty six. So, yeah. so it's forty six plots times. So forty six times two is actually nine hundred and twenty. Correct. So it looks like we are fifty dollars short, and I'm not sure why. So I I put the names of all of the folks that I've received. Barbo bundles the deposit slip with the application. And when I saw her earlier in the month, she gave me another round of people that were being held until we had confirmation that they were uh, approved to take on a plot this year. Uh -huh. So I am not sure why we're $50 short on the expected totals for our plot application. Well, why don't we do this? Um, um, when when Margie generates that new plot list, um, we can cross-check it. Why don't we cross just cross-check it? So rather yeah. than sweat it at this point in time, it may be perfectly fine. Let's just cross-check it when we can do that. Margie? Um, could everyone please call me Margie? Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm from New York, and there we say Margie. I'm not a born New Englander where they say Margie. It's just, I've been trying to let it go, but it gets me every time. I it's completely <laughs> understand. I'm a Nicole with an H. Nobody knows. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a few people on the list, I just wanted to say, too, who at least one, um, Susan Carmichael, withdrew, but she left some money for donation. I believe she was the one. I'm not entirely sure. And Lydia Berry and Nick Ferlazzo are also no longer members. Okay. So is it policy? It, it is not policy to reimburse people who pay a, pay a, wow, pay a plot fee and then decide that they cannot well, do the uh, season, correct? I don't know. Barbara said that it's difficult to do, but if people call her, mm -hmm. she arranged something and she was happy to hear two people decided to donate their fee. I think okay. Susan was one of them. I don't remember if Lydia was. I don't remember who the other one was. And Barbara just seemed really happy to know that. Okay. All right, they, then. They can write it off on their taxes. We, we are a nonprofit. That's true. Actually, I don't know if we're actually registered as a nonprofit. I Why think not? we talked about that years ago. Yeah. Okay. So on the next page, um, we have uh, the petty cash. 
Starting balance was $252. I, at one point, inserted $30 into the key bag in small bills to make change if people needed change made when they got their, when they paid their key deposits and received a key. So um, eventually that will work its way, way back to petty cash, but in the meantime, it's considered logged out of petty cash. Um, this is the reimbursement for, that was approved for um, Manchester. This is not an exact amount. This is actually a placeholder. It was more like 16 something, but you know what? I can afford that extra dollar. <laughs> and, and then I know that Karen has some receipts from last season that she mentioned to me. And when I, I'm, so I'm leaving this as a reminder of myself that this is an ex expected payment from petty cash. Um, and then eventually we'll have income in this column from the key deposits when that money makes its way to me. All right. Purchase orders and invoices. Everything that's highlighted in yellow over here is something that I have talked to slash submitted to Barbara. So we had um, some, we had the flurries invoice, which was submitted to her and the Broadbrick invoice submitted to her, which I visited her on the 20th and signed the purchase orders for those so that they're in the system to be paid. Um, there are a number of Abishan receipts, which do have invoice numbers on them, namely these ones, which, oops, the ones that are highlighted in yellow were scanned and emailed to me, and I provided copies of those to Barbara. There is one that I noted here, but for the life of me, I can't find the email it was attached to, and I am certain that nobody just handed me a receipt. And if anyone's memory can tell me about this Abishan receipt, I'd appreciate that. Um, that date, um, is that the date in which it was purchased or is that the date when it was sent to you? I've been putting the purchase date. Okay, all right. Yeah, so maybe it was a personal one and I accidentally got it conflated, but since everyone's been scanning them for me, I don't know how that could have happened. Um, so that's where the state of finances are. I'm not sure what is going on with this receipt. I have, don't think I would have put it in here unless somebody had emailed it to me, but I can't find that email now. So I'm, I'm alerting Barbara to it, but without the email and the scan of the receipt, I don't know what invoice number Abishan assigned to it. And the other piece of this is, and this is like more information forthcoming, is Barbara was going to double check on which DPW account we are supposed to be using. So I know that the ones, the Abishan receipts I received have said um, Greg Nettleman on them. Yes. Um, and she thinks that's not correct. And I'm going, she's going to double check and get back to me on that. Okay. Okay. And that's all I have to report. Does anyone have any questions for me? I, I do, Nicole Smart. Yes. Um, so will you then, I assume that, you know, in future meetings, you will report when the city actually issues payment for these particular things that have been billed or that you've submitted billings to them for. Is that correct? Yes, I can I can check with Barbara on the state of the invoices. Excellent. Just because I'm just because I'm thinking about the bear path thing and obviously you've right. submitted it. So we just need to know uh we'll we'll want to track that only because we you know have had problems in the past with that. So yes and thank you to everyone who has emailed me invoices and receipts as you as you have received them i really appreciate the promptness on that and and you know i put copies of everything that's been emailed me to me in a folder on google drive for the east hampton community garden account in the 2021 folder aptly named receipts and invoices so you can find them in the future <laughs> <laughs> and again, can I, a quick question: Do I can understand? Do I understand correctly that we expect uh, the turnaround on bills submitted to be what is it, six to eight weeks? Is that correct? 
Uh, the, the ideal that was uh, defined to me was four weeks. Well, four weeks. Oh, even better. The, re- the real that was defined to me was closer to six to eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Nicole. Hey, can I say something, Nicole? Thank you so much for like having this all so organized. It's it's refreshing. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see the balance because we'll, we'll, when I talk later on, because we need to go, we're looking to buy another weed whacker. So it's nice to know how much flurry has left in the account. But thank you again for setting up the grid and just having all the numbers there. You're welcome. I'm going to double check on, the, on those invoices to see if either are mine. But well, I don't think so. But anyhow, um, I I I had exactly four from you okay. via email, and they're all the ones that have the invoice numbers. Okay. And I searched by name from Mark from and from Frank, even though it was unlikely to be Mark because Mark's not on the purchasing list. And I know it couldn't have been from Karen because Karen has said that she's currently unable to successfully purchase with Abishan. Yeah, and I haven't bought anything from them yet. So I'm a, right. we're about to, but yeah, I haven't I haven't gone there yet for anything from the community garden, so it wasn't me. Yeah. So apologies that I don't have more information on that. Uh, Nicole, so if I, uh, when I do, if I take a photo with my camera and send that to you, is that considered a scanned in receipt? Depends on whether or not you pay out of pocket or whether or not you success, uh, they put it on the community garden DPW account at Abishan's. Okay, if I get it to work at Abishan's, what do I send to you? If you get it to work at Abishan's and you can send me a copy of the receipt. Well, let, me, let me rephrase that. Yes, no matter how, whether or not it's out of pocket or on the account, yes, send me a photo. That's a great way to keep a record of it. Okay. Um, the, if you put it on the account, it'll say that on the receipt. And if it needs to be reimbursed to you, then I can put it with the petty cash. Okay, so a photo with my camera and just send it to you. Yeah, as long as it's, please don't throw it away until I've taken a look at it and make sure I can understand everything. Yeah, okay. Okay. I never Super. throw receipts, I never throw receipts away. So you're, that's okay. Perfect. <laughs> Nicole, is, Car- is Karen on the list at Aubuchon? Karen is on the list. I put her on the list. And um, when I emailed Abishans and East Hampton Feed, East Hampton Feed replied to me, Abishans did not. Okay, because I, I would prefer to not hit the petty cash unless we have to. Right. The yeah, yeah. petty cash is meant to be for extraneous expenses that we can't pay through the city right. easily because yeah, anything like paid gas, through the city. Like gas for the mower and all that kind of stuff. Right. Right. And it's, it's, yes, it's definitely meant to be, but Karen has receipts from previous years. Right. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But when I went to Abishan's and tried to buy some seeds, they didn't know what I was talking about when I said the community garden account. And they said there were only two accounts for East Hampton and they didn't know, I didn't know which one to put it on and they didn't know which one I should put it on. So that was the issue. Were you able to go to East Hampton Feed or ask East Hampton Feed to order you things? Um, I went to East Hampton Feed and they, their seeds were really depleted. And when I was there, they had like almost no flowers. They were in rough shape that at that point so i can go back but they really didn't have what i needed at that point yeah karen, karen i go back because they've gotten a whole new shipment in okay yeah okay is there anything anyone else has questions about the treasures report okay so again if, um, nicole it's the same link correct that i can just put in okay great okay thank you um, 
So Margie, did you, I was, had a little note here, did you? Oh yeah, she's, she's, uh, the sound is gone. She's muted herself. Okay, Frank in operations report. Uh, we need to mow. Uh, I, I did some the other day, but uh, if I can get up there and mow, I probably will within the next few days. But uh, once we figure out who wants to be on the mow crew, then I can I can meet folks and then I can show you how to use the mower. It's once you know how to use it, it's pretty straightforward, and it seems like a big, loud thing, but it. I've shown a couple of people you can what it goes by itself and you can just kind of read a book while you're mowing. I mean, you don't want to do that because there's things you could kill with it, but uh, it's really easy to use. It's a lot easier than you would think. So I went around, I didn't get to all the hoses, but there's at least five of them right now with bad sprayers and I can't get the sprayers off. So I'm just going to have to cut them off and we're going to need to buy new, new sprayers and I need to get some mail in mostly mail ends. Uh, and then I'll add those to the hoses. And if they're beyond salvageable, then I will, I, I will be going to Aubuchon and then we'll, we'll find out about the account and get that all straightened out. Uh, so, um, that, will be taken care of within the next week because it's about to get really hot. The watering is not as big an issue right now, but it's going to be. Uh, Mark and I have been talking, and Mark, I'll, I'll put you on the spot. Did you get a chance to go by Flurry today? Because I did not. I, yeah, I did. Uh, the, the the lower end model there is 179 bucks, and uh, you know they have many ones with attachments. I didn't know if we really needed attachments, but I would. Those are those are more expensive than you get a over two hundred. Yeah, we're referring to uh, we want to get a new string trimmer, uh, and and one that will be easy to use and easy to figure out. Uh, the one we have right now, it's just really hard to 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 put the new string in, and so I'll go up there and we'll and and I don't know, Mark, if you want to go up there with me, we could talk to them. Uh, yeah. But uh, we'll use that. That's why I was happy to see that we had over $300 still in the balance with that account because we should, we're going to need to get a new, a new string trimmer because it just so you all know, it's, it's, we're the very beginning of the season here. And the, for the newer gardeners, it's about to get in the nineties. And if you stand in the garden for 15 minutes, you can hear the weeds growing. So <laughs> all I can say is that if you haven't, got anything down yet to stop the weeds from growing or if you have weeds there is there's going to be a sense of urgency here because we're going to be in the 90s for like five or six days and and it's going to be optimal i've walked around already and looked at a few plots that were planted and there's grass that's about a quarter to a half an inch high coming up all over the place um so just there are saddle what do they call them saddle hose i think in in the uh in the shed and it looks like a stirrup on a saddle for a horse and all you got to do is get one of those and you just you can look it up online maybe we could post something uh, on the website but they're really easy to use and it and it just scratches the surface almost just to go through and control some things because i i I've been here since the beginning and I know what's about to happen and I've seen people give up with by the middle of July because they let the weeds get out of control. So just a, just a heads up uh, on that and spring trimmer. I don't have a whole lot more. Uh, I, I, I do want to, because it's going to get hot again too at both ends of the garden. Uh, when I mow, I've mowed out shade areas on there's uh, behind the shed. There's an apple tree. There's two, two apple trees there. Those are mowed out. If you're ever feeling like you just need to cool off, uh, you can, those are good shaders and they're, they're always mowed. And at the other end, there's a patch of sumacs, uh, by the compost area that I have mowed out. Uh, you'll have flashbacks to being in, being in your little club or you know or little fort. It's it's a nice shady area and just good places 
you know, if you if you just need to get out of sun for a few minutes and and cool off, those are two really good places, and they're cut low enough where you don't have to worry about poison ivy. Either. I did, no, I'm I realize that you've got them low, but I have gotten poison ivy, and I just wanted to make sure people knew that there's poison ivy under the apple trees. Yeah, no, I I I have I I, I haven't mowed it in like four days, which means with after that rain this weekend, it's probably up some. But I I make a point to try and mow that every time when I mow. So yeah, yeah, and, and that's one thing. If you're mowing uh, along the road, there's poison ivy there as well. Uh, if you're up right where the grass is growing high, the city will probably come through in about a month and they'll bush hog all of that. But in the meantime, if you're mowing up there, if you don't want to get too close, that's okay. I'll, I'll go back. I, I I get a reaction to something. I don't think it's poison ivy. I've never been allergic to it. Um, so I don't mind mowing up along there. I don't have much else to add right now unless people have questions. Um, I wanted to add a couple of things, uh, Frank. Sure. One being, I I'm just curious for the people here, here at the meeting, is there anyone here who has desired to mow but does not feel uh, uh, trained um, with a mower? I know that you've trained people, Frank, but I'm just curious whether there's anyone here who has not mowed because they, they wanted to, but they just didn't feel that they knew how, how to operate. It's Pardon? not me, but Fata Durek, D-U-R-I-C, has requested training on the mower when I see her. And I, showed, I showed her how to use it the other day. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I was up there, and, and we worked on some, some air. Well, I mowed around. Uh, a few of the plots in that area and then I worked a little bit where the weeds are growing up where we have all the rock piles but that's why we need to get another string trimmer because that's the only you can't use the mower in there it's just okay awesome uh, okay so you had the, something else too right yes I did um, on the hoses um, yeah we knew I, I just put the hoses out I didn't test them out or yeah or for that matter you know unravel them entirely and yes, and some are in problematic shape. And we have talked about getting, I, I actually did, uh, we have extra hoses in the shed and I just bought a new one. I, um, and um, I bought the kind that just, um, you know, it just doesn't kink. I like it, it's a heavy duty hose, but it really rolls really well. Unfortunately, they only had one, I bought it and I'm keeping my eyes open uh, for another. So Frank, if you're going back to Obershawn, uh, if you want to look at the brand new hose that I got, it's black with a thick a green line. Okay, so it's by your plot? No, it's not by my plot. It's in the shed. Oh, it's I, in the shed. I just, okay. I just put it in the shed. Maybe, oh, somebody, right, cool. maybe someone's deployed it, but that's the kind of hose I really like. And it's heavy duty. It's got to be heavy duty. And right. it just has the not, you know, kind of non kink. Um, the other thing is that we have a bunch of nozzles now, Frank. Uh, I bought two high quality ones, uh, I should say. Uh, heavy duty ones right then we did get a donation i think from someone had said that they could get some and, and we also have a bunch those are plastic ones um but you know they use well, their donation we'll use them you no, know they're in they're in the shed they're all together so i think that right. there are like something like six or seven of them okay cool then i'll check those out before i go buy anything but yes. i i those the nozzles that are on there those things are like I'm going to get, I've got some extra plumber's tape here, but we're going to have to do something on those because they, you're going to have to fit those um, ends on them. Yeah. So yeah. I would have to cut the, I'll have to cut them off. I, I do it at my hoses here at the house. I, it's easy to do. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, you want to get, you want to get metal ones, but yeah, the, those, that's the problem is the, the old nozzles, those things are on there. I've used break free. I've tried everything to get them off and it's, they're all impossible to get off. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh so, yeah. I'll put some grease in there or some plumber's tape or something next time when we put them on the, the new ones on. Okay. Cause the hoses are fine. There's very few, very few of the hoses actually, uh, split or, or anything like that. It's more about what happens on either end. You know, it's washers or something like that, which are easy. Yeah. Okay. Now that was it. Thank you, Frank. Yep. Any, anyone have questions for Frank? Uh, just maybe a comment, and I don't know if it's related to Frank, but it, it's related to the shed. Just to a, a reminder to everybody, I think Margie may have already sent out a reminder to 
be sure that the shed is locked when you leave or yeah. if, or if you leave it to someone else to say you know are you going to use need the shed make sure they have a key because i have come upon it a couple of times now where it was open and and the, the only worry there is you know we got some pretty expensive lawnmowers in there and uh we'd like to keep them secure so just a remark on that one that's all yeah i'll i'll say i mean this is the I don't know why anybody would do this, but it's good to keep things locked up. But I mean, we had one year we had somebody actually steal our sign, <laughs> the sign at the at the parking lot because they wanted the four by fours on it. <laughs> some old some old guy found the sign thrown in the bed of his pickup truck. Oh my god! And he was upset with us that it was there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, so you're on a, you're basically still on a country road. So yeah, let's try and keep the shed locked and and uh, just get the water turned off. Make sure if you if you remember to turn the water off. And uh, if you're up there and you're leaving and there's just one person, just you know, just ask if they want the water on or off. And if not, uh, go ahead and cut it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, the shed. It's important to keep the shed locked. It's very yeah. important. Never, we haven't had anybody ever try and break yeah, it. But but it would be a disaster. To steal our sign one time. So, yeah. Mark, so that's a good point. I think what we ought to do, frankly, is um, put up on the shed. Let's just say, for whatever reason, the last person there is someone without a key. And by the way, I still have one more extra key if people don't have them. Uh, call. It's better to call and say, "I'm here. I don't want to leave the shed open." But uh, I don't have a key to lock it. Uh, and maybe, Frank, um, we could put a couple of phone numbers up, maybe yours and mine or whatever, and or mine or Mark's, just so that people, if they have to, at least notify us that it's not, it's not secured. Okay, yeah, and the, the number will be inside the shed. And, and then when possible. And the case. shed will be unlocked. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Encourage people when possible to get a key. Yes. Yeah. Anyone who has anyone? Uh, um, yes, Karen. I need a key, so can I somehow get that from you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and okay. put it put it if you drive there, just put it with on the ring with your car key. That's that's what I did. Uh, I, I can, never forget it. Uh, Karen, anytime you want to meet there or whatever, I'm happy to. Okay. And can I ask Frank the the poison ivy in the pump house? is getting higher and close to the pump so is there a way to take care of that yeah I, if anybody sees that things look like there was like a, an herbicide used there it will either be salt or vinegar I'll, yeah i'll take care of it okay yeah it'll probably be vinegar okay that kills poison ivy uh vinegar pretty much kills anything Okay. It's just you don't want to use it in your garden because it also kills all the beneficial things in the soil. So, but since we're not gardening around the pump house, mm -hmm. we'll take it's care great of stuff. Good. Um, I, I, I have no pity on poison ivy. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's move on to uh, thank you, Frank. Let's move on to outreach. First, we'll do our internal outreach. Margie. Margie. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, I'm just happy to say that every plot has a gardener, and we've even we reached the end of the waiting list, so everyone on the waiting list has a plot, except for two people who are sharing plots and requested their own plots, but we haven't gotten to that. But um, I think it's good news. Um, I'm is really a lot this season and I just want to say that Deb Friedman has been awesome. She yeah. volunteered to pull out a whole bunch of thistle and with the help of some volunteers they got, I think it was D1, they got all the thistle out of D1 because the two people in that plot are away until I think still for another few weeks and we've all been in touch and it was arranged and Deb has put out that she'd be happy to be the thistle remover organizer and I have her phone number if people want it I can also send it out she said anyone can call her anytime if they have a thistle problem and they need help so I think that's really great news 
Um, I still see a little thistle here and there, but no more. There's no more of that thistle jungle in the beginning of the Ds, which is great. Um, so if anyone, I will, I'm going to send out like a meeting report. I pretty much do that every time unofficially, but I'm starting to see that there's a bunch of things that people should know, and there's really just a handful of people here. So I'll send out, I'm writing down a lot of things here, and I'll just put it all together and send it to everybody, and I'll include Deb's information. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's too much more. Just remember the ragweed. I haven't seen much of it yet. It's early. Uh, yeah, but I think with this hot spell, like Frank says, we're going to be able to hear it growing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think some of us are already sneezing from all the pollen in the air. Yeah. And I'm sitting here rubbing my eyes. Um, so I'll put out a weed warning also, Frank, based on what you just said. I'll just put one big email together with everything I write down here. If anybody has questions, everybody here knows to contact me and I'll, if I can't answer them, I will send it to the person who maybe can. But there's not much more to say. Thank you, Margie. And uh, out of curiosity, did Deb indicate that she has any thistle recipes? <laughs> I didn't ask. But it's shame for it to go to waste. <laughs> I, uh, well, you know what we did? She wanted me to come and pack it up because she didn't want to bag it. She says, is it okay to leave it in a cardboard box? I don't touch that stuff because I, I get rashes. Yeah. So she let it die in a cardboard box. I brought over a bunch of garbage bags that I have saved up from all the leaves I've collected. She bagged them, and I brought them to the dumpster here in my complex. So I'm, I'm really pleased with how it worked out. We just didn't have to dump it anywhere except the garbage, where I think it belongs. Okay. That's the worst thing for a landfill. Thank you, Margie. Let's move on to external outreach. And that's you, Eric. All right. Uh, all I've got to report is that the way that we have the minutes uh, in the Google Drive is, uh, is good. That works. I can link to them directly. Um, the way that the Facebook thing does, I can only attach images or movies to each of the posts. I can't attach documents. So if I want to attach the minutes or the... Uh, uh, or agendas or anything like that. They have to be stored somewhere on the internet. So Google Drive is, is a great place to put it. So let me know when those are up or, you know, next time you send out the email that they're available, uh, I'll hunt them down and link to them again. Yes, uh, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yep. Can you upload them onto the drive from the emails? Uh, I'll say I yes. Always... I but if I have that. any permission problems, then I'll I'll let you know. Oh, I, oh, getting in there. Yeah, no, I think I have permissions. I think I have permissions to the entire folder, so I can upload new stuff. I knew I could see everything. Okay, I I didn't try to copy anything into the folder. I didn't know if I had write permissions or not, but I I'll assume that I do. Until otherwise uh, broken. So I have a question. It just happened. It just worked. <laughs> Google is good like that. Karen's got a question. Yes. Uh, so, Eric, I received an email uh, saying you have access to a folder. And in a line underneath it said, this has been set up so that you don't need to log into an account. But when I clicked on it to open the folder, it wanted me to log into Google accounts uh probably it's open to anybody who hmm. it's a good question uh that particular folder if it said that you had if anybody has permission to it, if it's shared to the public as long as you have the link you should be able to get into it but uh, i couldn't yeah it wouldn't let me in not logging in okay I uh was, the was, password. was that the one the ones that i linked in the facebook post 
or um it an email came to me i haven't been to the facebook page yet so an email came to me saying you should be able to access this folder without logging into google accounts but it didn't it, it still asked me to log in okay um if you want to send me an email then okay. uh, we can discuss that yeah and i'll make okay. sure i'll make sure that i go into a browser and i've logged out of everything just to make sure that our agenda and minutes are fully accessible even to people who aren't logged into google at all okay that would be good okay uh, and eric always remember that the city website is a backup to this because they will they will post so you can include that in the uh on the Facebook page too, but thank you so much for doing that. And shortly, you're going to get photos to post, garden photos. All right, yeah, just send them my way. Very good. Um, I did note um, that Marilyn, you've joined us, uh, and I don't know if you want to come up and say hello, and uh, also uh, remind everyone what plot you're in. That's Marilyn Greco. Hi, let me see, uh, I'll get my, okay, um, uh, we're on C7. C7, okay, great. Carol. Yeah, and we just joined this year, we're really happy about it. Yeah, well, welcome, and thank, thank you for joining the meeting. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are now uh, at the garden donation report, and that's Mark. Right. Uh, as you all have been apprised before, we do have this wonderful option in our project of a donation garden to raise some food that would be donated to the community center in East Hampton. And at this point, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful option. It does, however, require a certain amount of work. And at this point, what we're really focusing on is clearing the, the space. What hap often happens, with, as we know with our gardens, is that they'll get overgrown at the end of the year. And then the next year you have to do something, rototill them or something to get them back in shape. Uh, it's pretty sizable, the amount of work that needs to be done. I, I did after Frank instructed me on how to use the lawnmower, which <laughs> there's a little trick, but once you have the trick, you're good. Uh, was able to clear part of it, but there's other parts that's in kind of raised bed frames that needs to be significantly weeded and uh, prepared so that we can put some food in there. We, we got one of those beds cleared out and Stephen was able to put in some uh, green peppers that Laura Fisher donated and I was able to put in some uh, tomato plants that I decided to donate. So we got one of them started, but there's still a good amount of work to be done. I had tried to schedule a work session for last Saturday at nine. However, as you all know, <laughs> it was quite rainy and wet. So we've had to postpone that I'm hoping to reschedule that for this Saturday and get some work. We do have, uh, I guess, three or maybe even four volunteers, but more, many hands make small work, so feel free to uh, join us probably at 9 o'clock this coming Saturday. I'll send out an email. So that's the progress report on the, uh, on the donation garden. It's work in progress. Okay. In terms of the uh, delivery, well, crew, first of all, we've got the, the coolers. I'm going to put them out, out of the shed now so that if you have some early crops like lettuce, as an example, which, which you may get bounds of with the warmer weather, and you want to protect them in that, so those will be out. Um, and we have a delivery crew ready, myself and uh, Mary has uh, also volunteered to, to join me, so we're ready to go when but we've got something to bring to the community center. So hopefully that's soon. Out of curiosity uh, for the folks who are participating, anyone have things that are already uh, in shape? There's obviously some strawberries that are coming in. Um, anyone have anything that is ready to be donated? Yeah. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, that Mary, normally we normally, by the end of June, be, very beginning of July, we normally are able to start. So, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, and the other piece about that that relates to Frank's report with the the weed whacker is, yeah, where there's a lot of grass in the donation garden, so we really need to find a way to trim that out. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mark. 
Sure. Not, um, we, we, there's, we're, re, we're at the section that is both uh, gardener feedback and also new business, but um, this is where I want to mention that Deb Freeman had about the um, garden, because we've had uh, the donation garden, because we've had discussions about you know, whether to have it or so. So she made a suggestion relative to trying to, to go to the community center and see if there are any available youth who may want to either help in the process of what we're doing and or otherwise uh, get involved uh, with growing. Um, so that's something that we can certainly check. I, I know from experience in this town that oftentimes people think that there are youth around for anything. <laughs> and when it comes down to try to find a good luck, generally speaking, so um, nothing is exclusive. We, you know, with, uh, there's nothing that is mutually exclusive, I should say. So any, any way in which we can get it in order. So I did want to mention it since she had raised, uh, she had raised it. Um, any other feedback from any of the gardeners here? Yes, Karen. Yes. So, um, so the pollinator plot is kind of divided in two. There's the side near the road. Uh, last year, I covered that with uh, cardboard and wood chips. And so there's been a line of sunflower seeds planted along the edge by the road. And I've put in seedlings for uh, Cosmos, Cleome, and Nicotiana. Uh, that's a rather wet piece of ground and I'm hoping everything does okay and that it starts to dry out. All of the cardboard that was under the wood chips has dissolved. It's disappeared. So if anybody has a chance in a few minutes, if they wanted to dump a wheelbarrow of wood chips over on the other side, that would be great because I'm going to have to uh, add to that side where the flowers are to make sure the weeds don't come up. On the other side, I have put cardboard and I have a bunch more cardboard that I've got and I've started piling um, wood chips on there and to keep that side uh, also in production I have some uh, small winter squash seeds so I'll put in a hill or two of those there and those vines can uh, grow across the wood chips while that's uh, you know the weeds are being killed and and whatever vegetables uh, are produced from that, those can go to the food pantry or wh wherever you donate it to. Mm. But it would really help if people, if they have a chance to dump a barrel of wood chips over there, uh, that would help me finish replenishing the other side and covering uh, the left side. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for what you're doing with that, Colin. It's such a wonderful addition and a important, really important addition to what we are doing and yeah. should be doing. So, Thanks. Let's help that out. Karen, I have a question. This is Mary. I'm your... Yes. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, where is the pollinator garden? Uh, the about... pollinator garden is the one closest to the pump house. Okay. Okay. A four. Uh, I'll be sending a map. Yeah, actually, Mary, there's a there's a row of asparagus that started to grow. It's it's kind of gotten into its fern-like state in the middle of that uh, plot. So it'll be it's easy to recognize by that. So the, the pollinated garden is like a, uh, A4, and the donation garden is like A5. So they're, they're next to each other. Um, new business items. Anyone? Hi. Yes, hi, Catherine. Hi, um, I had a question about workshops. I emailed Margie about it and then um, wanted to come on here and ask if um, it's possible to host a couple of small workshops 
just like within the community garden. Um, I grow a bunch of medicinal herbs and I can never use all of them for myself. So I was hoping to just host a few like seasonally related herbal workshops and get to kind of share some of the herbal medicine. Oh, that's really so just, nice. Yeah, I wanted to hear if that is um, yeah. an option or... No, I think it's an feedback. awesome idea. Sounds like a great idea. Oh, I'm into it. Would, would we publicize it beyond the, the community gardens or just for the members of the community garden? I was thinking just for the members okay. Um, okay. for now, because it seems like there's a big group this year. And I, I was thinking it probably wouldn't even be like... I'd probably only be able to do like eight to 10 people. So um, just cause I'm only growing so much right now. Um, so yeah, I feel like just keeping it within the garden would probably be enough. Great. Is this something you would want to do in person or, you, or can it also be done this way? It could be done over zoom. Yeah, I was, I was originally thinking in person just like with COVID in mind so like following all the guidelines um but it is also definitely an option to do over zoom as well okay if that's the case i'm happy to if you want to give a date and time i can create a zoom link and we can get it out to folks great so wonderful just, just choose something that works for you okay and also just give me what you would want it, how you would want it described. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And would it be possible to also do something in person with people? Sure. If it was a small group? Oh, yeah. I, I think that would be preferable to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, like it, I said, you can do both. That way you actually. Because yeah, the Zoom is, is, I mean, if you're going to be using a phone or something like that, it can get a little unwieldy and, <laughs> and it's kind of hard to really get the, the gist of it. Yeah, true. Also, there's the benefit of, I don't know about anyone else, but like plants in the ground versus plants more abstractly after they've been picked. There could be a big difference in identifying things later. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's really helpful to meet the plants in person. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much for that offer, Catherine. That'd be great. So let's get it going. Okay, great. So who should I email with? You can email me if you if you if you'd like. Uh, well, you can email me, uh, or Eric actually can. Oh wait a minute, no, we decided not to put it on that Facebook. Never mind, not Eric. We'll keep it internal. So, so we don't have that much parking. It could end up Margie. With stock, you know. So Margie, Margie, <laughs> Margie will take care of that notice. But I'm I'm happy to if if you want to do it by Zoom, I'm happy to create the Zoom link. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I just out of curiosity uh, for folks, is there anyone who has not got their share of the compost yet? Because as you can see, oh yeah, good. I'm glad because there still is some, but I don't want it to disappear before you've had a chance. So I know you're probably still working through your plot, so it's you haven't been ready for it yet. But I was just I was just curious. So. Mary is one. Is there anyone else? We might need a little for the donation. Yes, garden. right. That hasn't that I, I only put the equivalent of one bucket's worth in that mark. So yeah. That's another one. Any anyway, I'm just curious how many other plots. Yeah, I haven't gotten my compost yet. Oh, you haven't yet, Christine. Okay. If you're ready for it, please kind of yeah, you, you should get it. it and Mark, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, even where the first pile was that's pretty much decimated, I'm gonna rake because nothing, none of the grass or anything has gone to seed. I'm gonna try and rake that up into some sort of pile, and maybe we can just, I'll, I'll move that over to the donation plot. Sounds good. Yeah. Yes, hi, Meryl. Um, I had a question. Um, we're new, so I didn't. We don't know where to get the straw. We wanted to get some straw for our East Hampton. Oh. East Hampton feed. Oh, okay. Do you know where that is? Yep, yeah. do. Yeah, they have some bag straw. Uh, that won't have <clears throat> that won't have any seed. Sometimes the other straw does. It's hard to find straw anywhere that really doesn't have seeds in it. But that bag stuff, it's a finer 
it's going to be a little more expensive. It's a finer kind of cutting, but yeah. but yeah, that that's that's what I would. I mean, if you if you buy straw in a bale, make you know look look it over to make sure there's no seed heads in it, yeah. okay. or you will start growing things. Yeah. yeah. The, well, the bag one, you'll see seed heads, but it's been toasted, heated, or whatever. So, in theory, you get killed, I guess. Would that be the word? word? Yeah, killed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Any other piece of either question or new business? Otherwise, um, we're off to a good start, I think, generally speaking. Um, things look good as long as we keep the weeds under control and make sure that shed is locked and the water's off. Um, Keep things safe. There is again uh, disinfectant up in the uh, up, up in the uh, upper frame of the doorway in the shed from the inside. We will post phone numbers uh, there in case you're keyless. Um, only one person, uh, Karen. We will arrange and get your keys. Sounds like everyone else is set for the moment, so that's good. Uh, and so, look forward to stuff kind of coming in and getting things out on Mondays. So, um, uh, can I say one more thing? Yeah. This people at the garden have been so helpful to help getting us started, and we really appreciate it. It's made all the difference. Thank you, thank you. There's a great spirit there, and it's really evident. So, thanks. Yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. Good people and a lot of good information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I came late, and this may have been said, but. Um, I've gone to the garden several times and found the shed open. Yes. A couple times and found the water on. Yes. We discussed that and we've got a cure that. Okay. Um, so we wanted to make sure everyone's got a key. But, yeah, thank you. Okay. So again, our, our meetings are always the first Thursday of the month. Um, so uh, let's see, that would make uh, if that brings us to the um, that would be the eighth. The, uh, no, no, oh. it, no, it's the first. The first. Oh, wow. Next month on the first, July 1st. That's okay. The first, first Thursday, yeah. Okay. So uh, it's 808. Is there a um, motion to adjourn? I motion we adjourn. Frank? A second. Who second? Oh, Nicole. Okay. Third. Okay. <laughs> all the veterans, Nicole. Okay. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Beware of the weed. Thank you, Stephen. Everybody have a good night. Bye. Be safe. Bye, everybody.